We're going to demonstrate vital signs. We're going to start with respiratory rate. We're going to hold the arm, bring it up to the chest, counting the rise and fall of the chest as one. We're going to assess for rate, rhythm, and quality, and we're going to do this for 30 seconds and multiply it by two. If the, pull, if the respiratory rate is irregular, we're going to do it for one full minute. 30 seconds on the clock. During those 30 seconds, she took nine breaths. That gives me a respiratory rate of 18. She's unlabored and her breathing is regular. We're going to move on to a pulse now. Maintaining the same position, I'm going to move my fingers over to the radial pulse, which is on the thumb side of the wrist. And again, I'm going to count for 30 seconds. Multiply it by two. If it's irregular, I'm going to take it for a whole minute. 30 seconds. For 30 seconds, I have a count of 41. That gives me a heart rate of 82. Her heart rate is regular and strong. This makes it normal. I'm going to move on to blood pressure. This is my blood pressure cuff. I'm going to place the bladder over the brachial artery. The bladder should take about two-thirds of the arm and should be above the joint. I'm going to place my stethoscope in my ears and I place the diaphragm below the elbow on the brachial artery. I'm going to make sure I have a good view of the sphygmomanometer. I'm going to pump it up to about 160 place it on the spot. If I can hear anything at this point, I would continue to pump it up until there was no sound. But for now, I'm just going to release it. I'm waiting for that first sound. The first sound is the systolic blood pressure. As I continue to hear sound and allow air to be released from the bulb, the sound will eventually disappear. At this point, I will have the diastolic. The systolic for this patient is 114. The diastolic is 60, giving us a blood pressure of 114 over 60. I'm going to move on to her pupils. She's wearing glasses, so I'm going to ask her to remove those. I'm going to cover the eyes, move in from the side, and watch the pupil respond. And again, repeat it on the other side. The eyes should constrict as I point the light in, and they should act together in a symmetrical way. Last but not least, I'm going to assess her skin. I'm going to feel at the core. I'm feeling for color, temperature, and condition. Her skin color at this point is unremarkable because it's probably normal for her. Her skin is dry to the touch and is warm. Warm, dry, and pink is the appropriate medical term. That completes vital signs.